Hey everyone, it is September 6th and it's Tuesday and you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. Chaos. So we're glad you're here. Um, hope everyone's doing all right. Here's the minutes. So please add your name. Tell us where in your house you like working the most and why, if you want. You do not have to if you don't want to, but I will share. Um, great to see everybody. We don't have a very long agenda, so um, if there's stuff we need to talk about, and uh, just feel free to add it. I don't even know if Anita's here. I put that on here, uh, not to put her on the spot, but I don't see her. Anyway, so maybe she'll come, maybe she won't. We'll see. Yeah, so first and foremost, quick announcement here. Um, no chaos meetings next week because of chaos con and OSSEU and we have a lot of folks out and that's kind of just been our tradition to take that week off from meetings. So no, no meetings next week. If you are in the Slack channel and the general channel, you will have just seen a incredibly um, noisy flood of messages to that effect as I go and cancel them all on the calendar and notifies in Slack. So sorry about that. <laughs> My bad. I forgot it was going to do that or I would have turned it off before I made all those changes. So, sorry. It's just scroll. Before it's good. Just scroll. But it was connected. Now it's saying it's not connected. Um, and then uh, the only exception to that is the web content meeting. We are going to meet this week instead of next week and we're going to do it an hour earlier so we don't conflict with other chaos meetings. So if you are interested in <clears throat> talking about web content stuff come Thursday, this Thursday at 8 a.m. US Central instead of next Thursday at 9 a.m. Any questions on any of that? Okay, fair enough. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, the next item on our list, um, I know that Georg and Venya is not here, but I know Georg also has some thoughts about this and I don't see Georg either. So maybe we should hold on that. What do we think? Uh, the, one, the one thing I would mention is that the, uh, the scope of this working group keeps on growing. Uh, this, uh, as described, this isn't a social presence working group. This is a community working group. Uh, so maybe it's maybe it would take over some of the things that the web content meeting does. Maybe it would take over some of the things that the common working group is kind of looking at currently uh, from a kind of a community management standpoint. But it the way the way this is being described, it's more of a it's more of a community management working group rather than a social presence working group. So just my my thoughts. Yeah, I'd heard the phrase comms, like comms and outreach quite a bit. I think it covers more of that. Which is which is fine, by the way. I'm just uh yeah. I'm just saying maybe we should maybe not be thinking as a social presence working group. We should be thinking of it as yeah, the, the term you used or more of a, a, a more of a high level community management type thing. Anyone else have thoughts on on what this kind of group might entail? I mean, it, the scope is kind of growing because it's also now including like design and events, like everything. So I, I don't know. Maybe we need to better define that. Yeah, um, I hadn't included in my mind community. It had always been like website, social, brand. Just looking at the list here, events maybe like, you know, I don't know. And then social, like the website includes perhaps discourse. I mean, these, those are the platforms that our, that our community exists on, right? They're the, 
no, with the platforms that we use to to communicate, right? So it's the right. It looks like Georg is joined. Maybe maybe Georg can provide a little more context around this. Yes, hi, I'm, I'm jumping in. Good to see you all. So I just joined. What uh, are we discussing? Come. We just got to this, yeah, social presence working group. We were just kind of talking about the scope and like how the scope keeps growing um, to be a little more, uh, what's the word I want? All encompassing, because <laughs> everything's are kind of related. So it's, it's kind of hard to make hard lines. So we just, we were really curious about like your thoughts in particular, since I know you have a lot of thoughts and opinions on this and some experience with it as well. Mm hmm. So I, I'm not quite familiar how other communities have theirs set up. Um, what I'm what I'm imagining is that we have this group that has an overview of the different channels, which I'm seeing listed here, and also is planning some content throughout the month or so so that we have some activity there um, and we have a process for you know like with the newsletter if something comes up that we want to highlight then there's a way to get that communicated that's the idea how i see it And I also know we have we have uh, activity in China and Africa uh, and the US and Europe. So having some uniformity and some coordination between the regions would be a great outcome from this. So do you think it includes stuff like brand? Like on that list? I think uh, this group would have an opinion on brand and if we don't have a brand guideline or something, they would probably want to establish that, but I think we have something in the handbook around brand. We do. And so it's more about following that. So it sounds like Georg, you would recommend that this would be pretty much the only thing. Uh, maybe podcast would be part of that because it's kind of the content, the external content that we're producing. Yes. Um, okay, so like the podcast and maybe the blog, blog, and other external communications. Okay. And then things like um, the website design and things like that, events, would that, those would be separate groups, do you think, in your kind of vision for this? Yes, I, so designing the website, I think that's what we're doing right now. Once that is complete, I would hope that we don't need to touch that. I saw Nicole post it in the chat content strategy. Mm, mm -hmm. So yes, when it says content planning here, that's where I'm thinking content strategy. And Nicole, you, you have probably a lot of ideas here as well. I do. I, 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 I've been quiet because I haven't been uh, less involved in, in this, but, um, it, it would seem that we might want a content strategy and it's similar to, uh, or, or the content strategy executes to 
um, or uphold what's in the brand guidelines. Um, so I guess I see that as how they relate. Um, and then with a content strategy, it's then delivered through several different uh, mechanisms. One um, is typically the website, and then uh, you know the the others, as Elizabeth has uh, mentioned, are um, you know, blogs, podcasts, and the other um, content pieces. Yeah, it would be good to synchronize that a bit more because right now when a podcast episode comes out, I it goes live on the on the podcast feed. There's an automated tweet that gets set up on Twitter, which is not the most engaging. It just says here's a new episode and I send an email to the mailing list. And then the content is then picked up by the newsletter. But that's that's about the extent of it. And so this group having the content calendar and the strategy, I think, could do a lot more with that than what we have right now and promote it more and get more listeners. So is it more about the like the workflow of how that gets out and how we promote it? Or is it the content in the podcasts? Or is it something I else? think it, yeah. that's a great question, Matt. I think it's um, uh, part process or part part workflow, and then part um, uh, determining, um, I don't want to go too marketing here on folks, but determining what our, um, what our voice and unique um, point of view is and being able to uh, deliver that through um, through the blogs, through the podcasts, through the other content, through through the website, through the other content pieces. But I, I agree there is a part that is a workflow. One of the other questions, uh, Georg, that I was gonna ask as you were, um, as you were talking, there was, uh, do we um, currently ask uh, others? Because I think one of the uh, pieces about us becoming more visible is uh, providing folks perhaps with, if they need this, with suggested social copy or, but essentially having each of us be a um, a megaphone, if you will, for you know, saying, "Hey, you know, this this new uh, podcast episode was just released," or you know, "Gosh, I really love how you know so and so talks about this topic," or you know, whether it's that's with a podcast or with a blog, um, where we could all be um, uh, voices to help get the word out. So I, I want to make sure I understand the suggestion is that we pre-write some tweets and share it with the community that they can use? Typically, um, yeah, that's, that's often done um, when you want to uh, enlist individual voices. So. Um, there, there are uh, communications that go out, um, as you mentioned, um, through the newsletter, um, an automated tweet, uh, where that would be from the chaos project. And then there are the individual voices who could also help amplify the, the different content pieces that are being published. Um, and that I was just thinking that might be something that we could uh, do is um, uh, is along with, hey, this was just published. It'd be great to for for folks to um, uh, to to retweet or to uh, initiate a post about it, a, a social post about it. 
um, you know, and, and provide them just with just a few suggestions, even if it's just here's what the here's what the episode was about, or um, you know that that kind of thing. But it, it makes it easier for them. Um, it's lighter lifting for them, uh, you know, if if we provide them with uh, some suggested uh, a suggested post. And this to lead back to what Matt's question was, this would all be within a, um, a flow, a, a, a workflow, um, where okay, maybe it's this. Here's how something is. Uh, like a podcast, here's how it's published. And then once it's published, here are the different things that that happen to promote that piece of content. Hopefully I've answered your question, Georg. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes, you did. And I like that idea as part of the process. I'm I'm thinking about we need an earlier part in the process also to discover content or invite content when we create the calendar, the content strategy, um, because there is a lot of things going on in the community. We have people who are active on their own blogs, writing relevant and related content. And I would love to elevate what's going on in the in the broader community, not just in the chaos channels themselves, but use chaos also to reshare or, or share the things that are done relevant to the topic so that when you want anything that is community health analytics related, uh, you hear about it from chaos. Yeah, I think that's a great um, that's a great point that that chaos becomes the place where you would hear about, or, or at least one of the prominent places that you um, get news and information and resources, tools um, in in these areas. So when I joined this call, the question was, is the scope becoming too big? Have we been able to keep it in line or does this start to feel big again? The scope is still a little blurry for me. So, and it wasn't necessarily that the scope was too big it's just that, as described, the scope was sounding a little bit, it was sounding bigger than just a social presence working group. So, uh, I think it might help to look at examples from other projects to see how they've structured things and maybe, maybe put together kind of a charter document that describes what's in scope and out of scope for, for this particular group might help drive some clarity around it. And sorry, Ruth, I just saw that you had your hand up. I totally jumped in front of you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, okay, so what I wanted to add in is um, I promise, um the social presence group or um, the, the future name would have is, is really very important. I think I was chatting with Georg earlier last week, you know, about how we have so many very good things here at chaos that other open source communities um really would definitely benefit from especially our metrics and a lot of other things we do so having this group will kind of put those things out there and um get people to benefit or communities open source communities to benefit from the work the awesome work we do at chaos and another note is I think we should start like we should start in a smaller we while we are still defining the scope, um, we should also start like probably people that are like kind of interested in the work should start 
talking about how they can it could start with the um contents the calendar at the very smallest um way um then we keep defining the scope and you know keep moving that forward right because um we starting when we start we we'll definitely know how we are headed and we define the scope better it's a, it's going to be a continuous effort but i think we should um uh, you know, start to work in the smallest area, anywhere we could put hands on, especially with the Twitter. And I know with the Twitter, we do some posting um for the, um from the newsletter. And then I think there are some other automated ones. So we could start off with just the Twitter and, you know, keep expanding on scope. So that link, I put it in the chat too, but that link Don provided, one of them was generating a 404, but the, like, I think this is what you're talking about, Don, like actually kind of defining what these roles are. And there's some really great examples here. Yeah. Um, and if you go back to the marketing team too, there's also a charter, which talks about what's in scope and, and out of scope. It's in okay. the marketing team folder. Yeah. You see, there's a charter. Yeah, I like this. And then that would be to to Ruth's point too, like kind of like obviously Kubernetes is Kubernetes. And we could think about like what are some of the minimum things that we should be doing um, for the different roles. So have the charter and then have the different roles. And they could obviously be like maybe scoped in a little bit. This is, I like this. And I think this also, I'm guessing I didn't really look at the storytelling. But that might also be what you were talking about, Nicole and Georg. Like, how do we tell those stories of, of folks in the community? It might also be worth reaching out to Matt Broberg because he's involved yeah. in this effort and he's been involved in chaos in the past. He might yes. have some he might have some unique insights for us about what's worked and what hasn't within this particular group. Yeah. Also, I, I see storytelling also as one way to share how chaos metrics have helped like all that. I know there was a particular thread that was ongoing on the general Slack on how chaos metrics has helped uh, some groups or I think OSPO, some OSPO groups or some other um, open source communities and companies. So okay, I see storytelling as one way that could come in. So what would be some good next steps? How do we want to move this forward? Start a meeting. <laughs> Draft a charter for us based on the conversation we had today. And I can I can draft one and we can discuss it at the next meeting in two weeks. That would be great. And I do like the idea too of reaching out potentially to Matt so Broberg somewhere along this path. Um, Cause yeah, he was part of the community for a long time. Um, he's just a really nice guy too. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be happy to chat. So that'd be cool. Georg, do you, um, you said you were going to work on this and then bring it back to this meeting here, right? Yes, I think we are still defining this as part of the bigger group and defining the scope and what we want to do. I, I think we're not quite ready yet to form a working group. Okay, love it. And then I'm just going to um, leave it up to you to add it back to the agenda when you're ready. I don't want it because I know with like chaos con and like all the stuff happening in the next few weeks. So I'll just, is that okay? Just to leave, leave it in your court. Yep. Awesome. Oops.
Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. That was a good discussion. Anybody else have final thoughts or comments, questions on this before we move along? Nope, okay. Uh, Anita, I do not mean to put you on the spot at all. <laughs> um, I added this into, are you still on the call? Is Anita yes, on I'm here? right here. Okay, yeah. um, if you want to talk about it, awesome. If you don't really have anything to add, totally fine too. I just put it on the agenda just in case. Oh, well, I actually have something to add. So um, since the last time we spoke, I, I was able to create um, an interview guide for myself to help me walk through the path, the steps on how I'll go about this. For persons who have not gone through the main draft, I just dropped it in the chat. So we're trying to work on the, an interview campaign for underrepresented folks concerning the DEI metrics um, that we're currently tracking. And um, this is the project so far. So like, if you look at the important things, I've highlighted some of the documents that I've worked on so far. I've created the interview guide to help me walk through the questions, how I'm going to approach the, um, the um, participants, because um, I also need more, more help from the community for the interview processes, but yes. And I've also, uh, under the interview guide, you see a list of questions that I've um, drafted out. So I plan to um, arrange or organize the questions into three different groups, just like it's on this document, the one that um, the first group will track the personal information, the second goes for the, the open source experiences, the communities they've participated in, and then finally we'll go to the chaos metrics and then ask them um, questions that can debate their thoughts on our current metrics. So if you have any thoughts on the questions that are here and you also have input on the questions that are here, I would really appreciate that. I need feedback so I can um, start working on the, this survey. Meanwhile, I plan to use Lime survey to create this, um, the survey questions and all. So please go through the documents. Let me share it in the chat. So Anita, this is great. So thank you for this. If if you're going to be doing interviews, I might recommend that you find a few people to do practice interviews with, just so you, whoever is doing the interviewing is comfortable with the pace of the questions. Um, and sometimes like you see questions that they might look different on paper, but when you ask them, they kind of end up in this, you kind of get the same answer. So I might recommend that you just do a few sample interviews at first. Yeah, Um. so for that, I I plan to actually look for um, volunteers that I can also work with for the interview processes. But first, I have to get the, the general um, thoughts from the community where I can um, select a few persons that I can um, interview according to the um, persons or the individuals that we're looking for. So the number that we're working towards is from 10 to 20 individuals, nothing much. Okay. And I mean, if you wanted to do like a practice interview with me. Yeah. That would be fine. Like I wouldn't be official data for the interview, but just to kind of get used to asking the questions to see how long it does take um, and see if there's any repetition in some of the answers. Awesome. I'll definitely want to do that. Okay, cool. And, and maybe if there could be a few other people that would also be willing to just do um, sample interviews that aren't like actual data. That might help as well. I can do the sample interview too. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, good point, Matt. I really like this initiative of a, a, a dry run. I also want to add uh, 
Anita, you should uh, think about the platform that you'll be using up front, and I will suggest to use a kind of uh, aid that can do transcription. Sorry for the background noise, some works are going on. It will help to speed up the works because usually after the interview, it takes a couple of effort and time to transcribe the interview so that if we have to uh, uh, speed up the research work, while, while the interviews are there, the transcription and coding can start moving parallel so that we could start now building themes and concepts from what uh, the participants shared. Are you uh, are you there with me? Yes. Okay. I'm out of this. Thank you. It might be uh, like just think about the platform and hopefully suggest things that can facilitate transcription. Even if you do the recording, it's always helpful. Like Zoom, like the Teams, or many any other open source thing that people might be f uh, familiar with. I was gonna I was gonna say we could use the Chaos Zoom for these. And, yeah, and Zoom Zoom does offer uh, actually pretty decent transcription. I've used it before for interviews. It's probably about eighty five percent accurate, mm -hmm. uh, but it's pretty easy to go back in and and yeah. edit that yourselves mm -hmm. uh, after the interview to to get that act to fix that accuracy. Okay, so people are interested in the research work, uh, especially when the data are out we could now start the, qual the qualitative co uh, coding. Those who are not familiar with, we can have, I can offer a, a brief work, a working session. How are we doing this in Tarita reliability and many others, if we are using grounded theory or any other method to, to really do a kind of high level abstraction. So, because that will be the, 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 the core of the, the qualitative section of the interview then uh, while we move forward with the survey and the quantitative uh, works of mining the repository, at least it will, it will help to speed up the work. So if we just get the mechanisms in place, some works can be going along parallel. But by the way, I really appreciate what you are doing, Anita, and the things. I will try to uh, give some feedback offline. All right, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for your input. I would um, reach out once I get the data for the um, interview before I proceed. Thank you. Is the is the plan to have this go through a university IRB or what kind of protections do we have for the? Uh, interview subjects, I suppose, is the question. So, because the, the IRB is usually there to kind of help protect the interview subjects. Um, we're not really getting the personal information of these persons. We're just getting the information that relates them to open source, like the GitHub repositories that they've contributed to. We're not getting like in-depth information, except they give us permission to, and um, we indicate that um, during the um, survey process. So if you're interested in getting, sharing your information so we could contact you, please um, indicate. So, so what information from these interviews will we be sharing? Yes, so um, that is what these questions under here provide. You see, we're asking their emails in case they actually want us to reach out to them, the organizations that they've contributed to, the open source co communities that they're involved in, and if they're um, the underrepresented groups that they belong to. And um, those are like the only personal questions that we're asking these persons. Okay, that sounds good. I think the question Kevin asked is a very interesting question that I don't know if math can help you with this because most universities, if you present the uh, the instrument, the survey instrument and the interview uh, guidelines, they could they'll go through it, then they give the ethical review board can approve it with that uh, document. It, it would cover the studies. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice step. Yeah, the universities provide and an really kind of an ethics check mm -hmm. on the process. It's nice. 
to do that. I used to have one, but it's, it, is, it has expired and I cannot renew it right now for the transition period. Yeah, I mean, between Sean and myself, yeah. we have a couple of universities okay. that could provide this. And it's, I think it would probably be, my thought is it would probably be a good idea even as a community to, to do this. It would help specify like um, how the data is handled, who can see the data, how we report the data, um, those kinds of things. I do, I do worry a little bit anytime we're connecting demographic data to specific projects that people work on or specific quotes that we may want to share. Uh, I, I worry that that demographic data uh, in open source, it can, it can very much identify people. No, what we, we do in this case is you use a kind of double blind. We, we could talk through these processes offline. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. But never mind, Kevin, this uh, double blind usually solves this kind of problem. But I agree with math, we can talk in detail offline. All right. Don't worry, Anita, it doesn't add a huge amount of overhead. Like all the work we've done is, it's all good. Because okay, I'm not so sure of it. I wanted to ask more information. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, thanks everyone. Any final comments, questions, thoughts on this? Okay, we'll move on. Um, just another reminder that we are going to be opening up a chaos community survey. So keep your eyes open for that. We would absolutely love your feedback. We will be opening that at ChaosCon and, and launching that. So um, keep your eyes open and be ready to give us your feedback. We would absolutely love that. Um, and the, the reason we're doing that is to help us center DEI within chaos. So it's I'm kind of like taking a pulse of the community and how everyone's feeling and people's experiences thus far. So, yeah, we would love that. Um, and then the next line says, I think we're all set with chaos con. I think we have everything. The schedule's done. Like we're still kind so. of getting some of the recordings coming in, um, but yeah yeah so you've got you're getting like the the slides and the video and recording yeah okay all right cool i mean obviously you you and i should coordinate later in the week maybe just to i don't know yeah. just to make sure that we're all good there and yeah i don't know just let's do that okay any final stuff Um, I also realized, I think Georg is doing the opening remarks. Yeah, he's going to do the, like the hosting. Yeah, is he still here? No, he just left. Okay. Um, we also need to give him some information about the survey, because I think oh, if sure. it's on him to do it, like we, we haven't yeah. told him I really anything. So yeah, we'll have to loop him in. We can just do that maybe on the Slack channel. Okay. Um, is there any questions about Chaos Con or anything that's not clear? Um, if you're curious about the live streaming, I think we do have a few people who are able to take that on and, and make that work smoothly. So uh, we are going to be, from what I understand, we are going to be streaming on our Chaos Con, or sorry, Chaos YouTube channel. So we'll provide that link. There is a ChaosCon Slack channel, and we'll put that link to the live streaming in there. Maybe we'll also put it in general. I don't know, but um, watch for Slack. You don't have to register. You will hopefully be able to just access YouTube. Um, and if you can't access YouTube, I think we are going to be recording. We have do some have some pre-recorded talks, so um, all of those things will be available, and we can um figure out a way to post those somewhere else if we have folks that aren't able to get to youtube 
So yeah, no problem is unsolvable. Everything is workable, right? <laughs> so. And it's only three hours long. So if we screw up, it's only three hours. <laughs> That's it. That's right. <laughs> it's not like a five day event. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Totally. We'll get it though. Yeah. And we will be chatting in the ChaosCon channel during the event to try to keep everybody integrated with in-person and virtual. Um, I'm going to do my best to try to help bridge that gap. It will be very early in the morning for me. So it's going to be crazy early for you. Yeah, like 4 a.m. So I, I might, yeah, look a little rough, <laughs> sound a little rough, but I'll get coffee. It'll be all fine. <laughs> Angry oh responses in the Slack channel. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I'll try to be nice. I, I try. I won't try to be cranky. Now, see, my kids would be like, "Mom, just stay up, just just stay awake," and that'll be easier instead of having to get up early. But that's not going to happen because that would be bad. <laughs> I don't do I don't do all nighters very well anymore. So, um, okay. And then Matt, you had put a little note about the DEI travel support. You want to talk about? Yeah. That? So we're moving ahead with this. Um, so we've kind of circulated this idea. Thanks for everybody who had feedback on that that form. Uh, so this is a new program that we're going to be starting in the CAS project, and it's to support uh, not a huge dollars, but to support uh, travel for things like Chaos Con or Chaos related or open source community health related um, talks that people are giving all over the world. So uh, I just talked to Kevin this morning. The hope is to get that posted maybe sometime today. And we'll share it out once it's it's posted. So pretty happy about that. Sorry, Matt. Can you can you give me that link again? I uh, I apparently didn't copy it from the uh, Zoom call when we, uh, when we nope. chatted. Okay. Um, I also just wanted to say we did run Chaos Con through our DEI badging. We're still in the process of doing that. Huge thank you to Anita and Enoch for being our reviewers. So we appreciate that. We had some great feedback um, on on the process and uh, on the conference. And Anita had the suggestion to help with um, visibility of diversity, equity, inclusion, as, and family friendliness. Um, specifically, the diversity act um, diversity access tickets that the LF provides as well. So we added a section on the Chaos Con site based on direct feedback from Anita. So thank you, thank you. That's the whole point of the whole DEI badging process is to find ways that we can be better. So um, yeah, so thank you to those two folks and everyone who has worked on the, the Chaos Con site, you, Kevin, mostly. <laughs> Appreciate all your work and for getting those changes up there. So Thank you, you did a lot on this one too. It was it was good. We'll uh, just keep making it a little better every time. So it's good. Also, I'm I'm very appreciative of the uh, the the text that was added for that. I think I I had noted that when we when we were uh, when we were doing Chaos Com for Fosdem, we actually we did have a section that kind of discussed that. But when we for the Linux events, we were just kind of pointing them over to the the foundation. But anything we can do to uh, uh, to kind advance the EI on our website is, is definitely uh, uh, worth doing, so. All right, so we have, we're out of time. Oh, perfect timing, oh my gosh, how did we manage? I don't know, but great, great meeting everyone. Thanks for all your feedback and input and conversation. Uh, it was great to see everybody here. We will not see you next week, but some of you will be around at Chaos Con, so. Um, yeah, we'll be all around on Slack. Thanks again, everybody, for coming. And we'll see Bye, you later. Everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.